What's up, metalheads? My name is Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're new, consider subscribing. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button for me. All right, today we got something a little different. You guys will get to watch me get frustrated, I'm sure. So, fair warning there. Um, I'm going to be disassembling this Benchmade bug out. I got this on trade a while back, and it came with these uh, blue standoffs in there. I'm not sure what these are, but I want to... Uh, uh, take those out and put these in but I am going to strip the blue off of these Off of the thumb studs and off the pocket clip and go with a different color. You guys can probably guess what color I'm gonna go with but uh, Yeah, so take this part and do that and then also I'm gonna take this uh, wee coolix part uh, I used to have this thing blue I stripped the color off and I'm gonna try to refinish these scales a different way and not with color uh, my buddy Julio did a finish on a knife using a method I've never tried before. So I am going to attempt to do that method with a Dremel and see how it turns out. Um, and I've already ran into a problem. I started to do this off camera. I started to take this pocket clip off and this screw, body screw fell out on me. Um, and so I think I'm gonna have to use some pliers in there and hold that standoff to get this screw to come out. It's not captive, which is kind of dumb. So let's start with this one and try to get this one apart first. And then we will uh, work on that bug up. All right. So I'm going to have to go this way, but I can't get that one loose. But it should come out since the other screw's out. So let's take the, these out. Coolix is the best button lock action I ever had, ever, I've, I've ever felt. Um, I actually forgot I had this knife. <laughs> it sounds crazy. I was thinking about making a video. Uh, with different locking knives, different locks and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I don't think I own a button lock anymore. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of button locks, so I probably, and this is the only one I have. And uh, I don't know how much longer I'm going to have this one. But I do want to try to refinish this thing. So this screw is just turning on me. Let's, uh, let's grab a T6 here. And see if I can just hold up my finger and get this screw to come loose. I don't think these are captive. If they are captive, I didn't have them put in there properly, so. Yeah, that's not coming loose. All right, give me just a second. <clears throat> Gotta grab something. All right. Grab the good old Knipex pliers. I don't want to scratch that thing up too bad. Um, so I'm going to put some tape around it. Actually, let's go ahead and get this stuff out of the way. Get that button lock out of there. Throw the bearings right there. Set the blade up there. Stand off. Uh, pivot screw and pivot collar. Pivot and our other bearing. And these have washers in there too. I have to go grab a toothpick. Sometimes they don't want to come out. Yeah. This one is being like that and does not want to come out. Such tight tolerances, they're hard to get them out. Let me grab a toothpick real quick to get those out. those washers out of there if I can there we go all right oh no no did it hit the floor flashlight uh, flashlight should have just used a magnet. That would have been the smart thing. Oh, it landed on my leg. Good. Should have just used a magnet and got it. I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. All right. So this one, will, let's see if this one comes out all right. Or if it just spins too. See, now that one's not spinning. Makes me think I had that standoff in backwards or something when I last reassembled this knife. All right. So that scale's ready to go. 
go ahead and get the one screw out we can get out. See if we can get this standoff loose here. This is the one causing me problems. Really, do not like to destroy it in the process. So I don't think I'm gonna have to hold it very much. I think I'm just gonna have to grip it a little bit. But pliers and titanium are not a good mix. You know what I'm saying? Normally doesn't end very well. There we go. Broke free. Now, what was going on there? What was causing that to happen? Let's take a look here. And I have my glasses on, in case you're wondering. Um, I don't know. If that thing's captive, I can't see that it's captive. There's nothing captive in there. Hmm. So... I'm not sure because it goes in just free spins that way, free spins that way, free spins that way. So it is not captive. I don't know. Maybe there's just some Loctite up in there gunking it up. It's probably what it was. All right. So that's done. So we got all of our parts for that one right up here. These are what I'm going to be working with. And um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and go do it. Pause the video. And I'll bring you guys back after I'm done. And we'll see how it turned out. Because you can see I've already got some scratches all over it. So what I'm going to do to it will probably uh, make it look a lot better. So let's give it a shot. And if it turns out the way I think it's going to turn out, I will tell you guys what I did. I'm going to pause you. Be a while for me but just moments for you so see you guys in just a second all right metalheads i'm back i started to do what i was doing and uh realized i need some more uh dremel attachments so uh this is getting close to the finish that i'm going for it needs more with a wire brush basically using a dremel and a wire wheel to achieve the finish i'm going for I had one wire wheel that's been used and uh, the damn little wires are flying off of it in every direction. So uh, I did use uh, the sanding wheel to sand this down first. I did the same thing on this one before I hit it with the wire wheel. As you can see, it's still showing some of the sanding marks. So the wire wheel will take all that out and try to make it more like all this. And um, yeah, so I got to get some more wire wheels for my Dremel. So we're going to put that, this one on hold and leave this sitting back here to the side out of the way. Actually, we'll put them right here. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and uh, concentrate on the bug out. So, I'm probably about to cuss a lot. I love the bug out, but I hate taking this damn thing apart. Ow! Sorry about that. That hurt me more than it hurt you, trust me. That was my forehead hitting the camera mount. Ouch! <laughs> All right. This bastard right here. I'm gonna start cussing it before I even start. Actually, I think I'm getting better at this. I should stop whining so much. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Let's go ahead and take the pocket clip off. And keep these screws all separate over here from that Coolix. Coolix gonna be sitting there for a day or two, at least a day. I'm not sure if my work schedule tomorrow. If I have time to even go by Home Depot or Lowe's and get some more wire wheels. I could just order some on Amazon, but I'd rather go see them because if you buy the, some of those cheap kits for the Dremel, sometimes you get what you pay for. They're junk. So I think I'm just going to go get the actual Dremel brand. I think it uh probably be my best bet to get the best results. All right. I should probably just do one side at a time here, make more sense. Uh, here, we'll do this side. If 
I remember correctly, all these screws are pretty much the same length, so. Just sit all these over here. I think I gotta go ahead and take this liner screw out too. I can't remember. There's so many screws in the bug out. For such a small knife, it has far too many screws. Is that the same size as the rest? Yes, it was. All right. Actually, I gotta do the other side pivot screws on that side that wasn't very smart but generally the things I do aren't and now I'm spinning free spinning it's all right let's get the t10 out I'm going to take this pivot loose at this point I know how this thing goes back together I just don't like doing it but the more I do it the probably the more less I will dislike it I should be able to pull this through. You know, I went the wrong way with all this. This thing has a wicked sharp edge on it, too. Wicked, wicked sharp edge. Let's get that out of there. Now, what are these things? I don't know what kind of standoffs. These are like, they're not really standoffs. They're just like little pieces of plastic somebody cut and put around these standoffs. Very weird. All right, let's go ahead and get these. See where I went wrong now. These are captive. I forgot about that. Get them to where they're in their captive position. And I think I can, no, nope, still won't. Well, you bastard. This is why I cuss this knife when I take it apart. Because it's always a pain in the arse. Pain in the arse. For me, anyway. I just need to do it more often, I think, and it won't be such a pain in the arse. Um, let's see here. See what dilemma I got myself in? I've got the pivot holding this side together. I've got the liner screw holding that side together. Let's take that liner screw out. That's probably my problem. Hmm. Yeah. Genius, Jamie. Genius. kind of little standoffs these are. I've never seen anything like this. And it's just like a little me metal standoff that has this around it. Very strange. I'm going to go with the normal standoffs. how many screws there are in a bug out it's just ridiculous it's absurd this is uncalled for totally unnecessary we won't be needing those or those um, we'll probably need a pivot we'll need this bastard for sure this is the part that I dislike the most I'm trying to get well taking apart isn't that bad this piece but trying to get this to line back and go up and go back in that's where it becomes a pain in the ass. All right, let's just take the springs all the way off. Right, my stop pin, washer. All right, there's that. We'll go ahead and clean it all up while we got it apart. Our washers. 
stop pin. All right, let's get these uh, thumb studs off here. I think these are T8s. No, don't tell me those are T6, no. It's T6. Yep. Man, I hope they don't strip. All right. Didn't strip. But it is free spinning. Whenever you do stuff like this, you're going to strip it and anodize it that has threads on it and make sure that you cover up the threads with some fingernail polish so that uh you don't mess up the threading i've made that mistake before so we got to anodize those four little guys there and then we've got to anodize this pocket clip which these two screws are the only two like that So there's our anodizing parts. All right. I'm wondering if I can get these to match. You know what I mean? I don't know if these all came on the original bug out. I don't know how it was originally. Like I said, I traded for this knife when I got it. Um, so I'm going to do, go do some uh, stripping and anodizing. I'll bring you guys back when I have some color on it. Thank you guys and see you in just a second. All right, guys, got some good news and some bad news. Good news is I decided to go with 77 volt for my color. And the pocket clip turned out amazing. So uh, this here, this is 75 volt. This is a little brighter. Of course, this needs to be wiped down. I've been carrying this knife. So I went with 77. I like that, which is what I was going to do on everything. But the problem is the standoffs and thumb studs are not titanium. I'm not sure. I guess they're aluminum. Maybe they're aluminum and anodized, or maybe they're just... I don't know. They're not titanium, so I can't anodize these. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. We're going to have mismatched parts, but that's okay. Instead of ordering standoffs, though, I'm going to order a backspacer for the bug out, a titanium backspacer, and some titanium thumb studs. And I'm just going to get, you know, bead blasted. That way I can uh, anodize it to match myself. And I'm debating whether to go back with this black micarta or... They're both the, uh, both sets of these scales are um, platinum crossfade. And this had the micarta on it. I think I'm going to switch over to these G10s. So I'm going to have to disassemble it again when the other parts come in. I'm going to put these G10 on instead and see how I like the way it feels compared to the, these micarta scales. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to try some stuff out here. And now you get to watch me fumble through uh, trying to put this thing back together. It's just going to be funny. Trust me. You're going to enjoy yourself here. If you like to laugh at people. Um, because I have the attention span of a rock. So um, I paid absolutely zero attention to what I was doing when I disassembled this thing. No attention at all. Didn't even consider it. I have done this before. All right, so that, that one is, okay. So according to that, we should have a D here somewhere. I'm looking for it. Okay, there's the D. Now, which way is the D got us? D needs to face up. All right, so there's our D. It'll have to go that way. All right. Before we get to that, we got to deal with this nonsense over here. So this one will go there. So this will have to go right here. 
and one of these bad boys. Which one is it? Oh, it's this one right here. It's going to have to go in here. Okay. And that's going to go right there, like that. And I'm not even going to worry about cleaning this thing up right now. I'm just going to put it back together. So this video has been a kind of a fail, you know, disassembled two knives and couldn't put either one of them back together properly. Um, well, I can put this back together properly, but I just got to do it again. And the next time I do it, I probably won't do it on camera. All right, let's see here. Get on there, you get on there. There you go. All right, so that's going to go there. That's going to have to come back off. The blade and washer's got to go in there, so. Go down, pivot. So, I'm just going to leave the pivot off for now. Put that right there. And I'm going to clean off my washers. With a little rubbing alcohol. All right. Normally, I would always choose my Carta over uh, G10, but I don't know this. Uh, this G10 feels really good on this knife really does feel good so uh, all right let's go and get a pivot back in there now where's our flat side there it is all right i don't think we really need lube underneath the washer but we're going to put some anyway and i'm using kpl heavy i need to get some order some slick them all from ocd for edc i keep saying i'm gonna do it but i never do I'm gonna try it out. KPL Heavy works great on washers in my experience though. Ooh, got a thick spot in there. Right there in that paper towel. It does get solidified up inside the needle. If you haven't used it for a while, it'll get chunked up. And doesn't want to come out properly. Oh, speaking of my wire wheel, a piece landed up here. I'm gonna be finding that shit all over the place for uh, a while, I think. Actually, I think I'm gonna run the vacuum cleaner. Cause it, I didn't do it inside, but the things kept hitting me in my shirt, and, and uh, so I think they're all over me, and they're falling off of everything. All right, and put that right there. Um, we should probably go ahead and do a standoff, actually. These are D shaped. Man, even with glasses on, I'm struggling. Let's see here. I don't think it matters with these scales. I don't think it matters. Now, if you're using the OEM scales, it definitely would matter. But these scales, I don't think it matters. Instead of blurple, we got purple and blue. All you uh, bug out lovers out there, I know you're laughing. So, if you got any tips to offer, feel free to offer them in the comment section to tell me how I'm doing this so, so wrong, because I know I am. I should probably go ahead and put that liner screw in there, also, would be my guess. Hold that in place so it doesn't go anywhere on me. There we go. Now, I think we can. Actually, let's go ahead and put the thumb studs on here.
I could have sworn these were titanium. They, they must be aluminum because they're not magnetic. None of them are magnetic. The thumb studs or the standoffs. Nothing's magnetic, so. Hmm. Alright, we're getting somewhere. Slowly. Some dogs going nuts. Someone. Right, this is where I hate this knife. Trying to get this thing back on here. It's always a pain. I have learned you gotta leave the stop pin off. I'm thinking the blade being. Oh, I think Amazon or somebody's out there. I think the blade being down would be better, maybe? Shit, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's upside down for one. That much I do know. Alright, get in there. Hey! Hey! How do you get that stop pin in there now? Stop pin's definitely got to go in first. On that side, I think. I don't see any other way to do it. So, I'm going to attempt to leave the blade on there. And it's D-shaped, so it is captive. Okay, there's our D. There's our flat side. Right. It'll be a miracle if I don't cut myself. All right. somewhere that will be in business I think I think we're getting somewhere oh too far oh get your ass back right there um, hmm this is a tricky part too how do you get screw onto that thing I don't remember how I did this last time, but like I told you guys, my memory span is, and attention span is that of a rock, so. Um. Get your ass in there. All right. All right. We're getting close. We're getting close. Right? I think we're right. Okay. Just putting that on there pushes that liner up. Now I see what's going on. Now I remember. Gonna put the liner screw in there first to hold it in place, I think. Something's really off here. The pivot is not resting down there properly. 
I know it's in there properly though. It can only go in one way, you know? Maybe it's just these scales are a little different. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it just needs to pull into those scales. Whoop. Have to adjust that shortly. And I'm not worried about getting this thing adjusted too much because, you know, it's coming back apart very soon. I knew I had that way too tight. How's our centering? We're dead centered. And one thing I do know about the bug out it takes very, very, very little to make your adjustment. I'm talking just barely turn it. It can make a big difference. We're still centered. No blade play. We're dropping. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead and put this pocket clip on here just to see how it looks against that black. Because when the thumb studs and the backspacer get here, I may change my mind, you know? About the purple. I doubt it, but it's possible. You know, looks wise, you can't really even tell much of a difference between. Well, I guess you can tell a difference with the micarta and the G10. But this micarta is more of a slick micarta, so it's not very grippy. It feels more like this G10. I mean, in the filling in hand, you can't really tell much of a difference. You know, I think I may go ahead and get the Axis lock bar also in titanium. That looked pretty sweet matching, right? If the thumb stud and that match the same color. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that, I don't know. I'm gonna go shopping real quick. As soon as I get done with this, clean my mess up here. I'm gonna go do a little internet shop and see what I can find out there. See where I can get the good backspacer at. I'll leave those here. I may need them in the future. Now I gotta put this mat somewhere out of the way because it has all my Coolix parts on it. Oh yeah, I forgot about these things. These are for the bug out. Are these? Yeah, see those are still. I don't think I even need these. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I may just throw those away. I don't think I'll ever use those personally. I'm dropping shit. Alright. Alright guys. Comment below. Other than flytanium, is there somewhere else good to get bug out stuff? Bug out parts? Like the thumb studs, backspacers? And the uh, lock bar. Um, Flytanium, I know, has... Well, I don't know if they have the backspacer, but I know they have the thumb studs and the lock bar. So uh, I'll check and see if they have a backspacer or not. 
yeah comment below what do you think you think i should go with purple again or you think i should go with a different color it's too, not too late to change now right it's like now speak now or forever hold your peace i don't really like the blue for some reason the blue just makes it look cheap in my opinion i don't know why that is but in my mind it looks cheap purple i think looks pretty good on there Gold or bronze could look pretty good too if everything matched. Gold and bronze, gold or bronze, um, probably bronze more so than gold. More like um, like this. Where's it at? Um, no, oh, maybe something like that color on there. But I don't know. I think the purple looks better than that personally. I don't know. I'll figure it out once I get the parts actually here. I'll figure out what I'm gonna. What color to go with but i'd love to hear your thoughts what color would you like to see uh let me know uh, maybe you guys can pick the color for me on this one and uh because i'm gonna be doing more stuff down the road too that you guys aren't aware of yet lots of cool stuff coming up um put all these right here in the deeper pockets so they will not get lost There we go. Yeah, that's the one that hasn't hit had the uh, wire brush on it yet. This one's had the wire brush, but I need got to wire brush it some more. Yeah, I'm curious how the, it would hold the nano with that finish with the wire brush, because of certain like stone wash doesn't hold anno very well. Every time you touch it, it messes up. Bead blast holds an anno really well. I wonder how much how well the wire brush would hold the anno. Maybe worth anno in it and holding it and seeing how 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 well it holds up. I don't know. All right, guys, I've been rambling on here for far too long. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you guys on the next one.